Hey everybody, Michael Snyder here, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is July 9th, and right now we're looking at the visible satellite imagery here. You can see the marine layer not as far inland as it was yesterday. The Seattle Metro clear so far. Same with Portland here. That should remain the case during the day. That means we're going to warm up a little bit more here across the area. You can see some of this mid-level moisture moving up across some of the Cascades of Washington. This will up towards BC here, create some thunderstorms during the day today in the afternoon. And then we've got a weak feature moving through here and that could spawn some severe storms, mainly Cascades East. We'll take a look at that in some detail here coming up. But look at this smoke across some of Canada. I mean, just tremendous amounts of it here. And if it wants to stay away from the Pacific Northwest, that's fine by me. Some of it is filtered down into BC here, uh, Southern BC, I should say, and into the valleys. And it's in the atmosphere aloft as well, but we're not getting the really dense smoke here. Can you imagine if this was old over an extremely populated area would be quite the news story. So taking a look here at the mid-level water vapor loop, this is what's going to kick off some of those severe storms here. This little feature right there is going to move up across Oregon, Washington as we go through Sunday night into Monday morning, Monday afternoon. And we'll look at that in some more detail here coming up. And again, you can kind of see that mid-level moisture spreading up across Washington towards BC. This is looking at uh, Mount Rainier uh, Paradise. And you can see that mid-level moisture moving across the area. That snow patch is gone out there. And then uh, yeah, so nice day to be out there across the higher terrain, but watch out for those thunderstorms popping up out there when thunder roars, thunder roars go indoors. Now here we go, Monday strong thunderstorm potential, actually severe thunderstorm potential, and this does include uh, just east of Ellensburg, Wenatchee, Chelan, Winthrop out there, Moses Lake, Ritzville, Spokane. You guys are under the gun for some severe possibility here, mainly a wind threat here. So this could kick up some blowing dust. You might get those walls of dust moving across the area here as we go through the day Monday. Look at this low locally to 65 miles per hour and isolated large hail is possible here but not the main threat and this is Sunday weather here at Spokane National Weather Service afternoon showers and thunderstorms across the North Cascades and uh, North Mountains and North Cascades and you can see the highs nice and toasty out there and some occasional gusty winds low relative humidities out there watch out for the fire danger this is mountain lightning safety here National Weather Service Seattle and if you're caught in a storm it tells you what to do here most of you guys know what to do but if you're near a vehicle the best thing to do is just get in it and roll up the windows. Now here we go, isolated dry thunderstorm potential again today across eastern Oregon into southeast Washington, a little bit into the Idaho Panhandle, and again tomorrow with some of these storms, again they could be kicking off some uh, prolific amounts of lightning here and the elevated fire risk will be in place across some of eastern Washington and Oregon. This is day one, this is for today, this does not include the Seattle Metro, I wish they would clean up these um, uh, the guidelines a little bit here. I mean, just it's not, I don't think it would be that difficult to just kind of show the correct areas, but they keep including some of Western Washington in these outlooks that are kind of getting careless with the marker, I guess. This is day two, Cascades East. There you go. Uh, severe weather here possible again with the thunderstorm activity, prolific lightning, and some wind is the, are the main threats with these storms. And this is the day two wind outlook showing there. Here we go, Seattle. Again, 74 yesterday. Quite a nice day again. That marine layer again knocking down those temperatures a couple degrees below average. No precipitation so far this month and none expected. Although there is a little system out there that might be coming and we'll take a look at that midweek. Uh, we'll look at that in some more detail here. We've got some model disagreement on that. Spokane, warmer than Western Washington for sure right now. 93 degrees on the 7th. And again, they're kind of a day behind there. But no precipitation so far this month for Spokane either. Now, this is looking at 500 millibars, 18,000 feet. And you can kind of see the turning in the atmosphere associated with this system as it comes across Sunday night, Monday morning, coming across eastern Washington here and up into British Columbia. That's what's going to be that severe weather maker potentially as we go on into the day Monday. And then this next system back here we'll look at that in a little bit more detail here in a moment we can see that one kind of moving across western washington got some model disagreement with where that one's going to set up but again these are very subtle features here and this is looking at the European lightning flash density potential. Now watch as we go through the day today. We'll see it kick off across some of the Cascades, British Columbia, Alberta up there again, maybe into the northern Oregon Cascades, across some of the Blue Mountains as well. And again, some of these could be uh, the dry thunderstorm variety here, so they could be fire starters. And as we go on in through Monday morning, you'll see the increase here across some of eastern Washington as you go through the day Monday with the severe potential here across Idaho and Montana as well. And then we're going to kind of kick this uh, thunderstorm probability off to the east a bit here as we go through the afternoon Tuesday. A couple days looks like a little bit of a break from some of this thunderstorm activity, except for maybe across the northern portions of
to Washington into BC and Alberta shown there. This would be Wednesday afternoon. Here we go with the NAM 3K of a high resolution model. This is 500 millibar height and winds. And if we put that out in motion, you can kind of see a little kink in the flow here, moving up the Oregon coast as we go through tonight. And that's what's going to be that severe weather potential here across eastern Washington. Kind of see the spin in the atmosphere there with the upper level low kicking off some of those thunderstorms on the day Monday. Could start as early as Monday morning across portions of northern Oregon on in through eastern Washington. This is looking at 500 millibar temperature. Just kind of giving you a visual indication of what it looks like at the upper levels of the atmosphere here. Uh, this, these cold air pockets here at the upper levels don't show up that well this time of year. It's not like a big winter system, but you can see that subtle feature move across the region. Now here we're looking at composite reflectivity on the high resolution model. This is what the Doppler radar may look like as we go through the next couple of days. Here we go for this afternoon. You can see again thunderstorms potential for eastern Oregon the Cascades here up into BC and then as you go into Monday you'll see some of this activity fire up on the east slopes of the Cascades Monday morning you might hear some boomers here across Euphrata, Moses Lake, Ellensburg out there, Eatonville and this will move up during the day and then there's some storm potential here on the back side of the slow that I'll be watching there the HER shows us a little bit further south this feature which I'll show you in a moment and if that were to be the case I'd be out there chasing across some of the Columbia Basin there but we'll see how that goes you can kind of see the turning in the atmosphere here as you go on and through Monday night into Tuesday morning. Now taking a look here, this is lightning flash density potential on the high resolution rapid refresh. So let's go through the day today. You can see the thunderstorm potential here. And then as we go on into Sunday night and Monday, look at this activity move up across the Cascades in eastern Washington. Monday morning, anybody out there camping, you're probably going to get woken up by some thunderstorm activity. And then going through the day Monday, you can see that move across eastern Washington. Then you can see kind of that bent back occlusion or a little bit of a similar feature there moving across from eastern Washington as you go through Monday afternoon. And I'll be watching to see if that little feature trends here. These storms would be quite photogenic here going across the Moses Lake towards the Ritzville area. So we'll see how that turns out. This is looking at 100 meter wind speed on the European check out the onshore flow going on here and as we go on into tonight you can see a pretty good westerly surge coming down the Strait of Juan de Fuca there east slopes of the Cascades getting nice and gusty as well as the onshore flow is going to keep places west of the Cascades more down towards average here and then as we go through the day Monday some of this wind might be kicking up with the thunderstorm activity here. So again, you can get some big winds out there, some blowing dust as possible. Monday afternoon and nighttime, you can see another westerly surge, some westerlies coming down the east slopes of the Cascades as well. As we continue this onshore flow, for the most part, on in through Tuesday night, and then this would be Wednesday uh, afternoon shown here with the continued onshore flow, keeping things um, relatively cool, uh, at least compared to portions east of the Cascades for the next few days. Now here we are looking at the European on the left versus the GFS on the right. And you can see Alaska, BC, Washington here. Now if I put this into motion, you'll see that little feature kind of move across Washington State there. That's that severe storm maker potentially. And then we still have that troughing kind of hanging around. But then as we go on the extended a little bit more, you can see a little bit of a ridge build here on both the European and the GFS as we go through this week. We might warm up a bit here towards the weekend. But then you can see some differences start to emerge. You see the GFS here with more of a trough across BC into Washington. That trough much further north here on the European model as we go. Then you can see the trough digging out on the coastline here on both models. But again, it depends on where this sets up. If this backs up a little bit to the west, this is going to bring much warmer temperatures here versus if it sets up shop closer, of course, we're going to get the onshore flow and be much cooler. But pretty good model agreement here, looking 300 hours out if you're looking way off into the future there. And you can kind of see that trough positioning there. So we'll see how that goes. It's going to be something we'll have to watch day by day coming up. This is looking at the European total precipitation in inches. And I want to show you something here. So there goes the thunderstorm activity as you go through the morning Monday and through the afternoon potentially across eastern Washington, up through northeast Washington into BC, some of the Idaho Panhandle in Montana. Then watch this next little feature come through here as we go through... You see that little blurb come across western Washington there on the day Wednesday? And a little feature showing up here that might bring a shower here to portions of western Washington. And it could actually go all the way up through uh, BC, down through western Oregon, depending on you know how this works out in the model runs here. But a little bit of precip showing up there. Not much to really get hung up on as of now. And uh, we'll look at that feature here again now. You can see the first one move through for the severe weather threat, and then the next one comes through on the day Wednesday. And that's that little one that 
the Europeans showing maybe a couple showers across western Washington. We'll watch that one a uh, little bit more closely tomorrow and try to get more detail on that before we start to worry too much about it. Looking at the NAM 12KM model here, and you can see the initial system go through, and then you can see that same feature here, but it moves a little bit more down towards western Oregon here as we go through the day Wednesday. So we'll look at that in some more detail tomorrow. Seattle Tacoma International, you can see a generally a right around average, maybe a little bit above here as we go through this weekend, as you saw that ridge try to build in for a, a, a spell here, maybe a few days, and then these temperatures probably trend upwards a little bit there but no big heat signal here through the next 10 days or so for many portions west of the cascades this is the tri-cities you can see some nice warm temperatures here downright hot as you get towards this weekend coming up here but 90s and into the hundreds not out of the question for a lot of the places east of the cascades this is looking at daily two meter max temperature and showing Seattle getting up towards 80 today with that marine layer back to the west a bit here. That may be the case. And look at eastern Washington up towards 100 degrees. A little bit of a cool down tomorrow, as you can see, only forecasting 74 for Seattle, mid and upper 70s for the Willamette Valley, 90s in eastern Washington. Here we go to Tuesday. A little bit warmer for Seattle, a little bit of a bounce back there. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, maybe build that ridge a little bit here. And you can see some 80s starting to creep in there. Some 90s for the Willamette Valley back into the mid and upper 90s for eastern Washington as we get towards the weekend here. Looks like we might start to warm up here if that ridge does set up. And of course, that could trend warmer easily. We'll just have to watch and see how that looks tomorrow. But here we go. Sunday, Monday, above average temperatures across much of the Pacific Northwest shown there. Now taking a look at the 6 to 10 day temperature probability outlook here and and you can see Seattle 78 this time of year, Portland about 83, Spokane 86. And this is about actually the July 18th time frame here. I took these temperatures from Boise, just getting towards averaging 92 here. But you can see they're likely to be above average here. So you can expect temperatures warmer than normal here across much of the Pacific Northwest. This is the precipitation probability outlook here. And you can kind of see the thunderstorm potential across Northeast Washington there. But the big signal here across much of the desert Southwest, Nevada, Utah, Utah up into Oregon here for below average precip and the 8 to 14 day keeps kind of showing this here and I'm not seeing too much of a signal of it yet we'll just have to go ahead and wait and see this goes through July 22nd don't get too caught up on that just yet but anyway yeah good thing this forest fire smoke isn't a little bit further south I mean this is producing huge amounts of smoke and clearly see how thick that smoke is up there marine layer a little bit further back today so get out there and enjoy that weather and watch out for those thunderstorms today and tomorrow as we go across the Cascades, eastern Washington, Blue Mountains, northeast Washington, Idaho, Montana, BC are going to be under the gun here. And it can start as early as uh, quite early Monday morning here. And watch out for the blowing dust there across eastern Washington as well with some of those gusty winds. So anyway, um, yeah, so summertime continues here across the Pacific Northwest. Um, we'll take a look at these features a little bit more detail tomorrow. And we'll see if we have any precipitation west of the Cascades coming in here. And if not, um, yeah, we'll go ahead and find that out. But Hope you guys are liking these videos. Click like and subscribe. Oh, and if you guys want that weather station, I'm going to put the link down below. Click on that. Save 10% off. And a great little weather station here. Um, and yeah, I can't recommend it highly enough. So anyway, um, yeah, we'll do this again tomorrow and I'll talk to you guys then.